Good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's Testimony Tuesday and uh, tonight we've got Lorna who's going to share her story for us and uh, we've just heard uh, one or two testimonies so far from different folks in the church family and uh, looking for more so if you're keen to have a go uh, or even if we can twist your arm to have a go please get in touch because it's so good to just hear other people's stories um, the verse in Revelation, you're probably familiar with it, um, it says in Revelation 12, 11, they triumphed over him, who is the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And so the word of your testimony and the word of my testimony is powerful. And it's not only powerful uh, for, for that reason, but I think myself, it's also, there's another couple of reasons that I think are really important. And one is that uh, by us telling our story of how we came to faith and the difference that Jesus has made in our lives, it can be helpful for someone who doesn't know Jesus yet just to hear that story and be inspired and encouraged and given that little nudge maybe to just take the next step and uh, come into a relationship with Jesus for themselves. And the second thing I think is for those of us, if, if you're already a believer, it's just really good to hear someone else's journey and someone else's story and it just reminds you of your own story once again um, I think it's a bit like if you're married it's a bit like going to someone else's wedding and while they're going through their vows you just remember the vows and promises that you made to your spouse as well and it just kind of cements that for you once again so really really useful um, hearing other people's testimonies and we've been using a, a framework for these I'm just going to read you out the questions um, and the idea being you would have a little bit of time to just chew that over yourself and prepare what you'd like to say and these are the questions where were you brought up who influenced your life as a child how did you become a Christian did others see the change did you know the change was real for you what does Jesus mean to you now what life verse or key Bible verse is meaningful to you and lastly, if you could make a challenge to anyone about following Jesus, what would you say? And um, so that's just a, a little framework to help you kind of plan what you want to say uh, on these testimonies. And I must say, when I was listening to Lorna's recording and getting it ready to, to put on for tonight, it just absolutely got me. It just grabbed my heart with both hands and uh, I found myself really welling up. So just a little warning, maybe you need to go and get a tissue. Um, and uh, I, I messaged Lorna just to say that, and this is her reply, and I've got permission to share that with you just now. She said, um, I was composed till I went back to the moment I got saved. I'm so, so grateful for that day, as we all are when we remember how we got saved, and it's still raw in a good way. I'm amazed how we all have a testimony, and each one is different and personal, and precious to each one of us. It shows the lavishness and fullness of God's amazing, powerful love. Truly, we all step from darkness into his amazing, all-encapturing, beautiful light and love he has for each one of us. And I think that just sums it all up. And um, we are privileged to hear Lorna's story tonight. And I just pray as you're listening that God will just rekindle in your own heart that these memories and these moments when, when this was your story and it was real for you at that time too. And um, if you're willing to share that with us, we'd be so grateful. Everyone's got a testimony. They're all different and they're all special and unique. And they can all be such an encouragement to, to others, to the, your brothers and sisters and to those who are outside the fold as yet. So give it a go. Why not? But for now, I'll leave you with Lorna and God bless you all. Bye for now. I was born in Arbroath, which is very lucky because my mum was going to get on a train and um, she went into labour. And if she'd gone to Dundee, I wouldn't be here today. I, I was about seven or eight weeks early. And um, so I think God had his hand upon me even then, um, which I'm grateful for. My dad was in the Navy, so we moved house every two, three years maybe. So I didn't really have any roots. The person who influenced me as a child is my mum and dad. They were my constant because we moved about a lot. 
Um, they were always there, I'd always encourage, they had boundaries, um, but it was quite insulated, but it was a safe place to be. Um, that was good. How did I become a Christian? Oh, I was stuck in Germany, I was very lonely. Um, Dave liked a good argument, so he had some Jehovah Witnesses come round. But these um, Jehovah Witnesses become my best friend, and I was going along to the meetings, and Dave could see that I was getting uh, going their way. And at the time, Dave was very backslidden at the time, so he thought, well, if Lorna's going anyway, she's going the right way. So Dave phoned his dad in Edinburgh, and his dad flew out to Germany. And I'll just say, uh, the week before he came, that was the worst week of my life. It was so bad. Um, anyway, Dave's dad came. And for the umpteenth time, I burst out crying. And I didn't know why I was crying. And I used to walk around the streets and I was looking for something. But I didn't know what I was looking for. But something inside of me just wasn't right. So, anyway, I burst out crying in the sitting room and Dave's dad says, do you know why you're crying? I went, no. He says, you're crying because you're a sinner, testing for help. That was a shock <laughs> because um, I knew other people were going to hell, but it didn't even cross my mind that I was. So he sat down and gave me a full gospel. For Jesus died on the cross for my sins and and he, he gave me the gave me the full lot. And then he says, Would you like to be a Christian? I says, Yes. He says, Well he sat beside me and he says, We'll say the sinner's prayer and I says What's the sinner's prayer? I didn't have a clue. So he knelt beside me and he led me through the sinner's prayer. And I was expecting at least one angel or something. But my heart was broken, and I meant every word. So I said the sinner's prayer. And I know now that my father-in-law, Ernie, went to his room and he prayed. He prayed the whole week and he had other people praying for me. Um, and I went to my bed. And I cried out, Lord, if you're real, show me. So I went to bed and I had the best night's sleep. But the next morning I woke up. And the first words out of my mouth were, you're real. God, you're real. And at that moment I had this peace, this love. So, deep 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 inside and it was brilliant and I know Dave's dad was still praying for me he prayed, all the, prayed for me for a long time because I was lived in Germany I was quite isolated I was away from family and just stuck in the house Dave saw the, saw the change in me he said I just asked him to do he said I'd become a totally different person. I had a purpose and I had a hope. And what I didn't know, but found out later, there was a friend at the top of the hill, around where, where I lived, called Sandra. And she was in her house with two children. She was a lonely mother as well. And she was not long saved. And she, she says, Lord, what can I do? I'm, I'm stuck in this house. And, you know, what can I do? And the Lord spoke to Sandra and says, look out your window and pray. And she saw me walking down the road. She had never seen anyone who looked so down and downtrodden and burdened. So she started praying for me. I didn't find this out till afterwards. And she became my best friend. She became my best friend because I didn't have any potatoes and the shop shut on Wednesday. And Sandra says, I've got some potatoes, I'll give you them. And that's how we become friends. And then I later found out she'd prayed for me. And the change. Yeah. 
from the inside out, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Did I know the change was real? Yeah. Because God showed me that he was real. And he loved me. It has been a journey. But you know what? I wouldn't give up the worst day as a Christian. I would not give it up. Because even that's the best day with Jesus. And I remember the change that I've seen. I used to sweep the stairs. We lived three flights up. And I'd be sweeping the stairs. And if I heard anyone come in the door, I'd hide in the cellar if I was halfway downstairs. And I'd hide in the loft. And it was dark. But I felt safer there. Meeting people, and yet I was very lonely. And God took that away as well because I started going to church and meeting people. A lot of encouragement. Um, a lot of hard times as well, but um, even through it, you get strong. Even the hard times, you get stronger through the hard times. And I find my best friend. Um, my son had speech therapy. Because she had the courage to tell me that he wasn't speaking properly. <laughs> that takes courage to tell a mum. And that shows a good friend. That really does. That's, you know, a good friend is with you through thick and thin. And I found that in my life. And Sandra as well was my good friend. <laughs> She's for Yorkshire. <laughs> Love her to pieces. Love her to pieces. What does Jesus mean to me now? <laughs> Everything. It's my rock. It's like when you're not on honeymoon, you don't know what's ahead. And it is so full of hope. And at the same time, it's like being married for a long, long time. You don't take him for granted, but you get. That relationship, you know, it's a deep relationship that you get as the years go by. And I still love him and I still thank him for the day that I got saved, for the journey I've been on, for the good times and the hard times. I love to worship Jesus. And I do in my heart and everything, but <laughs> he's not giving me a good voice. But I don't mind. I still worship him. The verse that I love. The verse that's meaningful to me is Psalm 34, verse 68. I'll read it out so I don't get it wrong. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. This is the verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. And then go back and read the whole chapter. It's amazing. He just loves us so much. If I could challenge anyone about following Jesus, I'd ask, I would ask if I could share my story. All the good times, and even the rocky times, how Jesus has held my hand and held me all the way through. Sometimes, being a Christian, it's like having a party. Just you and Jesus all along, all the way. I tell them that the Lord is good and they've got nothing to lose. Just ask him. Ask him tonight. He hears every cry. He'll never leave us and he'll never leave us to struggle alone. And I'm just so grateful that I know him as my saviour. Thank you. <laughs>